Today we're going to show you the Panasonic AGAC 90AP video camera. Our goal with this video, the camera, is to make you familiar with the camera's parts, functions, and how to use it. Although we will be covering the Panasonic specifically, the information we will include can transfer to other makes of cameras. It's essential that you learn how to operate video cameras regardless of whether your primary goal is radio or television. Many radio jobs are available for those people who know how to shoot video. Whether your primary interest in working in television is behind the scenes or in front of the camera, knowing how to use a camera is a must-know skill set. This series has four parts. Part one is the introduction to the camera. Part two is learning the specific functions of this camera. Part three is recording audio with this camera. And finally, part four will cover how to normalize this camera when you check it out so that you'll have the best possible experience using the camera. This is the Panasonic AG-AC90AP video camera. The Panasonic is a high definition camera that shoots in 1920 by 1080 resolution. That resolution is the same quality used in broadcast television. Let's begin at the front of the camera. The front of the camera is the lens, and it's surrounded by a lens hood. The lens hood is used to protect the lens glass, as well as limit glare from lights or sun on the lens elements. As we move down the lens towards the body of the camera, we come upon three adjustment rings. The first from the front and the widest ring is the focus ring. This ring can be turned to the left or right, allowing you to focus on your subject. The middle ring is the zoom ring. Turning this ring left or right allows the operator to zoom into or out of the subject, making it appear either larger or smaller in the frame. The last ring, or the one closest to the camera body, is the iris control. By adjusting the iris ring, you can make the image in the frame brighter or darker. You'll use these three rings from this point forward. Become familiar with how they work. Moving to the top of the camera, looking at the front, you'll notice a red LED light. This light is called a tally light. When you see this red light illuminated, you know that the camera is recording. Just above the tally light is the internal onboard microphones. This camera has a five element microphone array. The internal mics are preset to a left and right two mic configuration. Slightly behind the microphone array is a shoe mount. This mount is for attaching different types of equipment to the camera. Just to the left of the shoe mount and mic array is one of two microphone control panels. This panel is covered by a smoked plastic cover that allows you to see the positions of the four switches inside quickly. We'll cover what these switches do in part three of the camera series. Moving back on the upper handle of the camera, we'll find the sub-zoom lever. This lever allows for the zooming of the lens to telephoto or wide angle using a servo motor attached to the zoom ring. Additionally, this lever acts as a volume control for the headphone port while reviewing video clips that have been previously recorded. Next to the sub-zoom lever is a red sub-record button. Pressing the button once will start the recording process. Pushing it a second time stops the recording process. If we look down past the sub-recording button on the body of the camera, you see the main zoom lever. This lever also activates the zoom servo motor. The difference between the main and sub-zoom lever is that the sub has a constant speed, whereas the main zoom lever is a variable switch. A variable switch means the more the switch is depressed, the faster the servo motor turns. Conversely, the less the lever is depressed, the slower the servo motor turns. These speed options allow you to choose whether to zoom in or out fast or slow. For a more controlled zoom, it's recommended that you use the sub-zoom lever on the handle. The adjustable hand strap just below the main zoom lever lets you hold and control the camera with a single hand. Just above the hand strap and just behind and above the lens, you see two XLR microphone cable inputs. Notice that the inputs are labeled 1 and 2, with the first input nearest the front of the camera, while input number 2 is closest to the camera operator. There is a reason for this numbering configuration, and we'll cover that in the audio recording part 3 as well. 
Just to the back of the hand strap are the main power switch and record on off button. To power up the camera, the white lock button in the middle of the power switch must be pressed in. This will allow the operator to rotate the switch to the on position. Behind the power button at the back of the camera is two port covers. The top cover opens to expose the headphone jack. The bottom cover opens to reveal the camera remote control ports. You will use the headphone jack every time you are capturing audio during a shoot. Make sure to wear headphones or earbuds so you can monitor the audio recording. Moving to the top rear of the camera, then working our way down, you see the viewfinder, two SD card slots and cover, battery release button, battery, video export slots, and a camera playback switch. Beginning with the viewfinder, you notice that the position can be adjusted up or down. We use a viewfinder when we need to block any light that might be causing glare on the LCD screen. When we put the viewfinder at an upward attitude, we can see a lever on the bottom. This lever adjusts the diopter. A diopter is a magnifying glass that moves forwards and back to allow individuals with glasses to remove their eyewear and change the viewfinder's focus. We use the time code on the screen for making this adjustment, not the images from the camera. Never use the viewfinder without making sure to adjust the diopter. Below the viewfinder is the twin SD card slots and the cover. To open the cover, place a finger on the top of the cover and gently pull straight back. Once the cover is disconnected, a spring will pop it up, allowing access to the slots. There are two slots labeled 1 and 2. There are three configurations for these two slots. We can use one SD card in slot 1. We can use both slots to create two duplicate recordings on two SD cards. Or we can use both slots, record to slot 1 until the card is full, then begin recording video to the second SD card in slot 2. Typically, students use a single card in slot 1. For the SD card, you'll want to make sure that you purchase a Class 10 high-speed card. Insert the SD cards printed side up with the copper tabs facing forward into the appropriate slot and gently push in until it locks into place. To remove the cards, merely push the card in until it unlocks and let it pop back to be removed. Just below the SD card slots in the middle of the back of the camera is the battery release button. To remove the battery from the camera, this button needs to be depressed while sliding the battery up from its locked position in the battery holding compartment. To place the battery in the camera, you must position it so that the model label or bottom of the battery is set in the camera battery holding compartment first with the terminal ends of the battery at the bottom. The battery then is pushed in until it and the camera comes into contact with each other, then slid down until it locks into place. Always give the battery a little nudge to make sure it's locked. Just to the left of the battery is a switch that allows the operator to switch the camera from the record mode to a playback mode. The icon for the record mode is the camera shape at the top. On the left side of the camera are a series of buttons, knobs, and switches. These control the function of the camera. Each is important and you'll end up using almost all during your time at school. We will cover these in detail in the next video in this training series, Camera Part 2.